What's going on guys? John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to take data from an Excel file and take it to a list box with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to take data from Excel and move it into a list box with Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books. One time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is Monday morning here in Vegas, and today we're going to take this spreadsheet data from Excel and sort of import it into a list box with Kinter, and then when we click on a thing, you know, we can grab whatever it is. So we've done lots of list box stuff in the past. I've got a couple of list box videos in the playlist. Check that in the comment section below. I've got one on using list boxes, one on putting scroll bars on list boxes, and we've used list boxes for projects and things. So you can check that out if you're not familiar with them. They're just these boxes with data in them and you can click on them and do stuff. So I've got a very basic Excel spreadsheet right here. I'm calling it name underscore color dot XLSX. And it just has a column of names and a column of, you know, those people's favorite color, right? And I saved this file in the same working directory where we're creating our Python code, our GUI directory. That's the directory we've been working on throughout this whole playlist. And so that's cool. So first thing we need to do is head over to our terminal. And we're going to use something called OpenPy Excel, which is just a little library that allows you to connect Python to Excel. Super easy, super quick. And I've got a whole course on this and Python coming out probably beginning or middle of next week. It's done. We just have to do some editing. Uh, but uh, if you're interested, that'll be on codemy.com. I'll tell you about it when it's finished. So we need to import OpenPy Excel. So let's go pip install OpenPy Excel. Now I've already got this on my computer, so it's going to say, hey, you've already got it. But if you don't have it, it will install it. And that's all there is to it. So let's head over to our code. And I've created a file called list underscore Excel dot pi. It's in our same GUI directory, the basic starter code we've always been using. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So let's go right up here at the top. We need to import a couple of things from that OpenPy Excel that we just installed. So let's go from OpenPy Excel dot workbook. We want to import workbook. And this is a capital W. It wants to change it to lowercase for some reason every time I hit enter. So make sure that's a capital W right here here in workbook. And we also need to go from OpenPy Excel. We want to import load underscore workbook. This will allow us to load our Excel workbook basically. So okay, first, let's come down here and let's just create a quick list box the old way, you know, without using Excel at all. So I'm going to create a, a list, I'm just going to call it my list. And this is just going to be a Python list. And let's just go one, two, three. So we've got some stuff in a list. And let's create a little list box. And let's call this my underscore list box. And this is going to be a list box. We want to put it in root. And let's give this a width of say 45. And I want to make my app a little bit bigger. Let's make it 400 by 300. And uh, that's good. This needs to be width equals 45. Okay. And then let's go my underscore list box dot pack. And let's just pad Y this of 20 just to push it down the screen a little bit. So let's go create list box. Okay, so now if we want to put this stuff in this list box, this is a list we need to loop through it. And so uh, super easy, we could just go for item in my underscore list. And then we can just my underscore list box dot insert. And where do we want to put this? We want to put it at the end of the list of whatever's already in there, which is nothing. But every time we add an item, we want to put it at the bottom, you know, of the last item. And then we want to put in item, right? So really, that's all there is to it. So if we save this, and let's run this. So let's run this Python list underscore Excel dot pi. And when we do, we see one, two, three items added to our little list box, nothing really happens. Uh, but that's cool. So now let's sort of connect to Excel. And we can get rid of this because we don't need this anymore. And I'm going to get rid of comment this out because we don't really need that anymore. So let's create a workbook instance. And if you're familiar with OpenPy Excel, 
this is always sort of the first step. So let's go create a workbook. I'm going to call it WB. And this is going to be load underscore workbook. And then we just need to pass in the name of our spreadsheet that we want to access. And I called mine name underscore color dot XLSX. This is a standard sort of Excel file extension. And we can use a relative path here because I saved this file in this GUI directory, right? This up here, right? Otherwise, we would have to be explicit and go, you know, C slash GUI slash whatever. But since all these files are being saved in the same directory, we can use relative paths. So this will load the workbook and create an instance. Now we need to create a worksheet, which is, you know, if you look at Excel spreadsheets, these things down here, these are sheets. If we add a second sheet, right, this is a worksheet. The whole thing is the workbook, but each of these guys are specific worksheets. So we need to sort of designate a worksheet. So we, we just go WS equals workbook dot active. And this will grab the current, oops, active, there we go. And this will grab the current active worksheet. In our case, you know, there really is only one. Delete this guy here. This is our only worksheet. It is the active worksheet, so it will grab that. And let's go set active worksheet. So now we can grab a column of data. And I, you can call these anything you want. I'm going to call it column A and column B. We have two columns, so we'll grab them both just for fun. And then we just grab from the worksheet, and we can just designate, hey, grab column A, right? And it's just that easy. And we can come down here and do the same thing for B. Now, what's a column if you're not familiar with Excel? All right, see here it says A and B. This is column A, this is column B. Uh, rows go you know, left to right like this, right? Columns go up and down, there we go, like that, right? So we just grab all of column A and all of column B. Now, there are lots of different ways to grab data with OpenPy Excel. You know, you may have headers on here that say name and color or something. You may not want those. So there's, if you do have headers, there may be a different way you, you would want to use. Again, I'll cover all these things in my new course that I'm, that's coming out probably next week on OpenPy Excel and Python. But uh, for now, we could just do this super easy way and grab each of these guys. So this is basically going to be a list of data. I think it returns it as a tuple, but tuples and lists act the same way. So we can loop through here. And then just like we did earlier, we could just print these things out of the list box. So let's go for item in a call underscore a, and then we just want to go my underscore list box dot insert. And we want to put it at the end and we want to put the item dot value. So we're not just putting the item because that will return sort of like an object. Uh, this, the dot value is the actual thing, the actual name. So that should be all we need. Let's go ahead and save this head back over here to our terminal and run this guy. And boom, John, Amy, Tim, Mary, Bob, Cindy, Josh, April, Wes, and Steph. And if we look here, John, Amy, Tim, Mary, Bob, Cindy, Josh, April, Wes, and Steph. So just that easy. If we want to change this around a little bit, we could instead just as easily call column B, right? Save this and run it. Now we get the color. So very, very simple to grab columns of data from Excel using OpenPy Excel in this sort of method. So if we change this back to A and I take off the value here just to show you really quickly what this will return, it's not going to be comprehensible in any way. It's just, you know, sheet, cell sheet one, A, A2, A3, A4. So that's no good, obviously. We want, that's why we want the values instead of just the item. So, okay. So now let's come down here and let's create a label. So let's go my underscore label. And this is going to be a label. We want to put it in root. We want the text to equal nothing. And let's give this a font equals. Let's just go Helvetica. And let's make this big. So let's say size 18. And then let's go my underscore label dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 20 just to push it down the screen a little bit. And let's put here a select item, I guess. Let's save this and run it just to make sure that looked okay. Okay, so now it says select item right here. When we want to click on one of these, we want it to update this little label. You know, this is a silly thing to do with the data, but this is just to show you how to grab the data and do something with it. Once you know how to do this, you can do anything you want with the data. Um, but uh, this will just show you what to how to grab this data when you click on it. So 
what we're going to do is create a quick little binding, uh, sort, of, sort of a uh, single click binding. So whenever we click on here and then let our finger off the button, that will fire an event that will fire a function that will do something and update this label right here. So let's do that real quick. So let's uh, create list box binding. And we could just call my underscore list box dot bind. We've bound lots of things in the past. And what do we want to bind? Well, we want to bind button release dash one. And what do we want to do? Let's call the select function. And we don't have a select function yet. So let's really quickly come up here and create one. And I like to put my functions at the top of my code. So uh, select function. And here, all we want to do is update that label. So let's go my underscore label dot config. And we want to set the text equal to my underscore list box dot get we want to get whatever's clicked on. So what has been clicked on? Well, the thing that's been selected in a list box is called the anchor. So in all capital, we could just type in anchor. And that should do the trick. Now one last thing, whenever we create a binding like this, we're passing an event. And in this case, the event is releasing the button, your mouse button, right? So we need to pass that event into this function. So I always just use E, and that will work. Now I use button release, you could use double click. I think a couple of videos ago, in the tree view, I talked about double click. So you could do that if you wanted to instead of single click button release, but I like single click button release. So that's what I'm going to do for here. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. And now when we click on John, boom, it says John, Mary, Josh, Steph, and you can do, like I said, anything you want. Now that you have, uh, for instance, we look back at our code here, this thing right here, this is how you grab whatever has been clicked on. And now you can do anything. You can set this equal to a variable and then do something else with it in some other part of your code or whatever you want, and you're good to go. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeweb.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off memberships. They pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from CodingMe.com, and I'll see you in the next video.